anything you're overthinking or anything that's keeping you up at night, that's probably the root cause of your stress. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Abena and I talk all things self-growth, wellness and realness on this channel. So good to have you here and today I just want to talk about stress and being able to go from a place where the stress was just showing so much physically to a place where, you know, I still face stressful situations but it's not as much of a worry, you know. I don't also have to worry that I'm going to be looking as stressed as I maybe feel because I'm able to like manage it a lot better. So without further ado, let's get into the video. I feel like it was having a bit of a moment on TikTok where people were talking about things like cortisol phase and how it basically transformed their bodies, their lives, their physical appearance. And I remember just watching the videos and being like, I can actually relate to this so much because honestly, my face now, compared to what it was before, it's just totally different. Now, for those of you that don't know, don't know what cortisol is, it's basically a hormone that's released every time that you are faced, like I said, with a like, stressful situation. It puts your body into fight or flight mode, and fight or flight mode is designed for your own kind of safety. It's inbuilt in us as humans to keep us safe. But what that leads to is it causes things like increased appetite because obviously your body is now under attack, which is a stressful situation. So it's basically trying to preserve your energy and it's trying to also like get as much energy as it can to like keep you safe and like warm and make sure that if there is gonna be like a situation or a dangerous thing happening that you're good. But what that manifests as physically is that you're more hungry basically because you're obviously looking for more things to eat to preserve that energy. You're also probably less motivated. Even though you're on fight or flight, what we're also thinking about is the fact that you're in a stressful situation. So you kind of shut down emotionally for some people. Like for me, for example, I'm not someone that can be like, right, stressful situation, go, 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 go. I'm not like a fixer. I wish I was a fixer. I'm kind of more of a, let me take it in. Let me absorb what's going on and like process it. But in that kind of processing time, I often like to lose motivation. I kind of get down on myself because I'm like deeping whatever the thing is that I'm going through. So with that decreased motivation and that kind of instinctual increased appetite, what do you get? Weight gain. So this happened to me and I was just like, whoa, where did that weight come from? I was moving a lot less and I wasn't sleeping that well and I was eating more. So like it was very obvious why I was pinning on that weight. But in terms of like my face, I was retaining so much like fluid that my face was puffy. Like I literally look at past pictures and I'm like, I don't know her. I don't recognize her because that girl was like very stressed and it was showing in my face. As a woman, I think it's really important to maintain your level of peace, not just because it keeps you in like a good mental state, but physically as well, like it really does make a difference. So I guess for me, like the first thing is I mentioned about the puffy face, right? The best way to get rid of that kind of puffy cortisol face is really to drink more water. So you wanna be able to drink more water to like basically flush your system out. Because when you're craving those foods, it tends to be foods that are quite like high in fat, high in nutrients, but like, not great nutrients, probably salt as well. So that can kind of cause you to have that kind of puffy look. But what you can do to kind of counteract that is basically make sure that you're drinking enough water. Make sure that the salt isn't like causing that dehydrated look because that's what's happening. You're dehydrated and your face as a result basically puffs out. It's like when you get on a long haul flight, your skin and your face is more puffy. So definitely, definitely make sure that your hydration levels are up and then make sure that if you can, you can get a gua sha. The idea behind it is you're basically draining away the lymphatic fluid that sits on the top of your skin. Now, if you don't know about lymphatic fluid, lymphatic fluid, basically everyone's got some. It's kind of just that superficial fluid or liquid that lies on top of your skin. And if it's not drained away, it just sits there. It gives you the appearance of that kind of puffiness that you don't really like. So gua sha is really great to kind of help drain that. I'm actually going to get mine. One second. So I have my little makeup bag here. And the gua sha is literally like this stone that I use. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's really good because this part here, you can basically fit into your jaw like this. 
and then scrape it up very kind of lightly but before you do that a lot of people forget that you need to actually open up your like drainage system drainage systems are behind here so you just want to like pulsate behind your ear before you start and then grab this make sure you drag it across your jaw and then down across your jaw and down and then you can also use this angle which is this side the smoother side to basically drain it down drain it down drain it down drain it down yeah the gua sha is great use that twice a day and i promise you consistently you are going to see a difference and be like wow i look so snatched again that was quite like a superficial way of getting rid of the stress on your face but if i'm honest with the stress that you're going through you are going to have to address what the root cause is because if you're not able to address it then your body is just going to be in this kind of fight or flight response you're going to be in a state of anxiety your sleep is going to be affected and all these things that basically mean that your well-being is going to be in the pits and what i mean by that is your body keeps the score there's like a whole book on this on how like your body really does react to elements of stress the longer that goes on you're just going to really get to a place where it's going to be harder to bounce back and that's the point that you know you've gone too far and you want to basically like do something about it so with this, it's really important to be preventative and be proactive instead of reactive to your well-being being compromised because of the stress. And by addressing the cause and like the root, you're able to like face it on instead of trying to like wait until it really wears you down. I was just like, I'm going to try journaling. So I'm really passionate about journaling. And the reason I am is because I know that it does actually work. And I would just be writing down the things that I'm grateful for, but also the things that I wanted to see in my life and the things that I wasn't seeing in my life. That wasn't for me to be like, oh, well, I don't have this. But it kind of was showing me that actually I am missing that interaction with my friends after work, for example. And you know, that interaction with my family that I, because I'm so close to my family. So for example, I'd be like, oh, like I would really like to see my friends after work, but I couldn't because in the job and the place that I was living, it was just kind of very go to work, come back. So I was like, hmm, maybe I'm here for the job, but I'm not really here for anything else. And actually a job is really just one aspect of your life. So that kind of showed me that I needed to just change my environment. What I'm going through right now is as a result of me not putting my needs first and just looking at something as, oh, that's a good job, but actually not considering the other things that make my well-being as important, things like community, um, things like friendship, things like family connections. So all those things, you know, at the time, I didn't think they would be as important to me. But, you know, through journaling, I was like, that is actually really important. Like, I'm a home girl at heart. Like, I need my connections. I need my people around me. And that's what keeps me going. So as much as I was grateful for the job, that wasn't the only element. So I had to really address, you know, how I could... I guess become more well-rounded and more kind of whole outside of that job jobs are not your be or end all like yes of course they provide you a living and everything and that's really good but if it's ultimately not really adding or not allowing you to be whole in other areas of, lo of your life then i genuinely believe like things need to change i remember i went to my gp for something unrelated which is crazy at the time i had um like really bad stomach pains and it would like wake me up in the middle of the night. It was crazy. Didn't know what was going on. Went to my GP and initially I was just like, oh, you know, I'm getting these stomach pains, told her my symptoms. Before then she was like to me, oh, like what's your social situation like? And I was like, you know, I've kind of moved to this new town for this new job. Like I'm living by myself and you know, it's good, it's fine, whatever. But I think she could just tell by my demeanor when I was talking about it, that like it wasn't something I was super comfortable with um and she just said to me you know have you considered that you might be a bit lonely and i was just like i was like no i'm not gonna lie i haven't really deeped it that, that like that could be a cause of my physical ailments but the fact that as a gp like she is a medical professional and she kind of said to me look sometimes when you're lonely and you're maybe not loving your situation you're not loving life you can genuinely like manifest that as sickness and she was like you know we're going to do all the tests and everything but i just want you to kind of you know consider your living situation you know is there something you can do to maybe maybe make it better and then when she said that it was kind of like confirmation for me because obviously i kind of had an inkling and i was journaling and realizing that like that was what was missing so i addressed the root cause and i was like okay like i'm going to be proactive and start looking for jobs closer to home or back at home and if i get that then that's going to be perfect because i'll be close to london 
close to my family, close to my friends, and I can get that connection that I'm basically craving right now. But whatever the situation is, it's so personal to everyone. Anything you're overthinking or anything that's keeping you up at night, that's probably the root cause of your stress. So please just like make sure you address it and like you're aware because like I said in my last video, you can't actually take action on anything that you're not aware about. I think when you're aware of something, you then start exploring the solutions. What are the practical solutions that I can take to basically get me out of this situation? And honestly, the fact that you can start thinking up solutions, that's gonna make you feel hopeful. You're gonna not like start overthinking because you're gonna be like, even though I'm in this situation now, I see a, like I see a way out. Like I'm not gonna be here forever because I'm not a tree. Things change, everything is subject to change. And that should encourage you and will keep you basically going. And if you're able to, you know, think of the positives, it's gonna really help you dampen down that kind of negative, stressful situation until you're out of there. And I think something that we don't, again, really talk about, but when we're in our 20s, so much changes and everyone really is in their own lane. So it can be really, really difficult sometimes to acknowledge where you are and really just take ownership of where you are and realize that like, you have so much responsibility, but also so much freedom in what you want to do in your life. And this whole situation that I, I'm talking about now, the main thing it taught me is that I have autonomy over my life. Like if something is going on in my life or if I'm in a certain situation, you know, to a certain degree, I also have the autonomy and like the responsibility to change it. But I just need to kind of have a plan and stick to it and see where it takes me. And even like moving to this place that I went to, I initially went there being like, this is gonna be a great move. I'm gonna have the best time ever. And it just didn't work out like that. I enjoyed it up to a point and then I realized actually, I don't think this is right for me and that's okay. Like it's okay to make a move and realize it's not right for you because actually it no longer serves you or you're just not having a good, like, a good time. Like it's okay to admit that. Because we haven't been adults before, like especially in our 20s. We're really just big kids. So when you go through these things, like it can be really difficult because sometimes you're like, I don't see my way out, but please, 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 like don't feel like you're ever stuck. You know, everyone's situation is different, but I really rarely think that like you're ever, ever stuck in one position. I really do believe that you can get out of whatever situation you're in. And if that thing is causing you stress, then please remove yourself from it because it is gonna make you ugly. It's gonna increase your cortisol. It's gonna make you overthink. It's gonna be the source of anxiety for you. Don't put yourself through that. Recognize what it is and take it away. So remember how I was speaking about cortisol. So cortisol is very much a real thing. It is a real hormone that is fight or flight, nervous energy, we don't like that. So you need to counteract that with good hormones. And the way that you, you can do this is basically increasing things like your physical exercise. So I know that sometimes when you are just going through it, the last thing on your mind is to get up and move, but you have to really make a conscious effort to be like, okay, look, this situation, right now I've done what I can do. But I need to release that kind of stress from my body so that it doesn't sit there. Find something that is totally easy, but it means that you're moving your body. So the first thing that comes to mind for me and the first thing that I use is to walk. So I'm not talking about going on miles and miles and miles, but just to leave your house and be like, I am going to go for a walk to clear my head. Because actually when you're doing that, what's happening is you are getting those endorphins just from like moving your body, like genuinely. 15 minutes outside around the block, when you come back, you are not gonna feel the same than when you left the house. Whereas if you're in a stressful situation, that cortisol is just left to sit in your body and you are just gonna react to it, which is obviously the unhealthy habits and like the negative cycles of maybe eating too much or just being like feeling really low in yourself. But if you're able to kind of break that cycle by just leaving the house and going for literally 10, 15 minutes, get some fresh air, don't think about anything, put a podcast in, put some music in. Even if you go silent, just leaving your house, leaving that environment, moving your body, it's gonna increase your happy hormones, which are your endorphins. So apart from obviously clearing your head emotionally, also physiologically actually increasing a hormone that counteracts what the cortisol hormone is. So your body's kind of going into fight or flight, but what you're doing is saying, no, I'm gonna increase my happy hormones and basically trick your body into thinking that actually you're not in this like stressful situation anymore and that's going to really help and also moving your body is great because it kind of creates 
a good sense of tiredness so that when you've actually done that you're able to come home and sleep better because one thing from that really kind of bad time in my life where I guess I was just in that kind of chronic stress unknowingly was my sleep was so so affected and I remember I just yeah especially after I saw the GP I was like I need to do something about this and I need to basically stop what I'm doing because it's not serving me and what I was doing was basically feeling sorry for myself like ordering takeaway and just like not moving my body and it was creating this like sluggedness and heaviness and everything just felt like a struggle and I wasn't sleeping very well at those like in those days as well so I would get like four hours five hours so I'd wake up and I just wouldn't even be bothered to like do anything like I felt it made me feel so gross and just so like undone like I didn't even want to put effort into getting ready for work I had to really be like I need to counteract this and break this chain once and for all and again I didn't start with anything crazy but I was like I'm just gonna try after work instead of going straight home even though I'm exhausted I am gonna fight against this like my body's response and I'm gonna go for a 10 minute walk and then come home and if I can do that, like, I'm going to feel so good about myself. So that's one thing that really, really helped me, just fighting against the urges to, like, not be active. Because, again, sadly enough, your body, that's not its first instinct when you're going through stress. It kind of wants to keep you safe. But you need to realise that, like, that is as a response of that stressful situation. I know it's really hard to motivate yourself, but just say to yourself, like, you can do anything for five minutes. You can actually do anything you want to for five minutes. And as soon as you start doing the five minutes, you're gonna probably wanna do more. But even if you can't, like, five minutes is good. Like, you should be happy that, and so proud of yourself that you've actually said you're gonna do something and stick to it. And it's gonna make you wanna do other things, such as eat a little bit better, you know, make sure that you're tired enough so that you can actually get a good night's sleep and the next day wake up feeling better. And I just want you to picture as well, when you're often going through a stressful situation, there's two kinds of people. There's that person that can often, you know, be quite vocal about it and they tell their friends, they call their family. And that person, even though their stress isn't like completely gone, they probably feel a lot better having that outlet or having you know, someone to speak to or just, you know, telling someone and sharing that with someone. And you have the second person, which I used to be that person, where they're going through a stressful situation, but they feel like it's too much of a burden to maybe share it with other people. They don't want to bother anyone. They feel like, let me keep it all within myself. And that first person, as I said, the situation is not gone for them, but they probably feel a lot better. So again, that cortisol, it's being released because they're able to speak to someone have that human connection and just release some of the stress. Like, you know how they say a problem shared is a problem halved? That is so true. Like, don't. I'm not saying go and tell everyone your business and maybe overshare to someone that you're not close with, but I think we can all have one person who we can actually genuinely tell our problems or speak to about what we're going through. And that person's gonna be a great listener. That person is gonna probably want us to tell them, you know, what's going on in our lives so that, you know, they can be there for us and they want you to do that. So you're not gonna be a burden. But also the good thing is once you've done that yourself, you're able to release some of that stress and you're able to feel like, okay, I'm going through this right now, but I feel lighter now that I've spoken to someone. And if you don't have that person, you know, that's fine. That's what therapy is literally there for. But hopefully we can all at least identify one person in our lives who we can kind of go to non-judgmentally and just share that problem with and just let them listen and let them comfort us because sometimes that's all we need we need someone to tell us it's going to be okay um so I really hope that that's something that you can do but just don't be the person that I was but you know did not serve me at all and it was making me just store all of the stress in my body dealing with it all by myself which in itself was quite like hard but don't be the person that thinks that no one cares or that people don't want to hear about their problems or that they're too much or what they're going through isn't actually bad enough. Like whatever it is, big or small, please talk to someone. Don't suffer in silence. Like please speak to somebody. And there are people that love you as well that want to hear from you. So don't like suffer in silence. My very last thing that I would say and that I kind of learned from that process is mindfulness. So Mindfulness, if you're not aware, is basically anything that's able to take you away from that stressful situation or able to just clear your mind, but genuinely clear your mind. So 
a lot of people will meditate some people will pray some people would genuinely just like take a minute to themselves to like do breathing exercises for me it was prayer i need to as well as do all the other things that i've mentioned but i need to leave it into your hands god i need like help from above basically and i think as well in prayer what's really nice is that you're able to have even if it's obviously not verbal back-to-back -back conversation with god you're able to speak out loud what you're going through so that really helped me because i'd be like wow that prayer was kind of deep and i didn't even know that it would get that deep but because i was just speaking and like saying what was on my chest i was able to kind of release all the thoughts in my head in like a verbal way and i genuinely believe that that's also really helpful in helping to process some of the feelings that are maybe stuck inside that are causing you to be under that amount of stress but i do think it gets to a point in life where you have to really fight for that joy fight for your peace and maintain that peace um but anyway thank you guys so much for listening it's been so good to be here um so great to have you here if you've enjoyed this video please don't forget to like comment and subscribe i'd love to like hear your stories and like how you've kind of for against stressful situations and yeah if you also want to listen to this by the way i do have a podcast called sunday evenings so that is on spotify i will leave the picture here and i will leave the link down below as well and i really kind of created it just so that it could be a space and a platform where you know we could all kind of prioritize our wellness on our way to success because i genuinely believe that like everyone is on their own journey to success but i just feel like we have to maintain our sense of like peace and wellness and like mental stability on the journey there because it's not easy life throws you so many curveballs um and it's kind of also why i wanted to start this channel so please do give it a follow and a like if you are enjoying this content and i will see you guys in next week's video bye <music>